it takes some people longer to solve problems. It just takes them longer. It takes more time. If you're watching this video and maybe you feel like you run out of time on math tests or you're just behind all of your classmates because it just takes you longer to do things, I'm here to tell you that you're not too slow to learn. In this video, we're going to talk about slow learning and some of its benefits. And this is the opposite of me. I've never been a person who's too slow. I've always just rushed through things really quickly. And that could be good, but it can also be bad. So I'm going to start with a simple story. I'll keep it short. When I was in graduate school, my first semester, I took a class. Uh, it was a topology class with a really great teacher. And I had a friend. He was a really cool guy, really smart guy. I, I liked the guy. He was just a good person. And he was very brilliant, very intelligent. And on our first test, he made it through half of the questions. I think it was about half. And he answered them all completely correct. But he didn't finish the other half of the test. So he failed. And I could not believe it. I was just blown away. I couldn't believe that he failed. And I felt really, really bad for the guy. I really liked this guy who worked really hard. I thought he was extremely intelligent. I was just, you know, being in his presence was like an honor. This guy was really, really smart. And so for me to see him fail, I was just blown away. And I, I just thought to myself, wow, he just needs to go faster. So fast forward to the end of the course and the remaining exams. He did better. He finished all the exams after that on time. He sped up. He decided to work on speed, which is important. And at the end of the semester, there was like some weird extra credit that involved turning in your notes or something. But that involved like a lot of like copying and printing, which I didn't want to do. So I didn't. But he did it because he needed to make up for that first exam where he ran out of time. And I think he ended up with one of the only one of the only A pluses in the class. There might have been two or one. It was very few people got an A plus and he was one of them. So well deserved, really smart guy. So what can we learn from this story? You know, what what did I learn? I mean, I guess I learned a lot of stuff, you know, and I still think about it today when I do mathematics. I still think about him because his ability to work slowly has a lot of strengths. So if you're a person who works slowly and you feel like you're too slow to learn, for one, you're going to get a deeper understanding than someone who rushes through the material like myself. You know, if you sit down and you carefully work through a math proof and you think about each step, think about the hypothesis, think about what you're trying to prove, think about where the proof breaks down. What happens if you're missing some of the assumptions? Can you get by with a weaker assumption? Not only that, after you finish the problem, you know, you should go back and just go through your solution carefully. Take time. Have patience, which is very hard to have. Force yourself to go slowly. And it makes it better. You'll learn better. A lot of times, you know, I'll encounter a problem and I'll rush through it and I'll get stuck. But if I take a step back and I slow down and I think about it more carefully, I can figure out the solution. And I think that's one of the greatest strengths of slow learners, right? It just gives them more power. So if you're watching this video and you're a slow learner, just know you have that. Think about the fact that you have this ability, this ability to think more carefully than someone who is naturally really fast like myself. And if you're like me where you just speed through problems and just get the answer and you know, oftentimes don't think about what's going on, you know, the lesson here is to slow down, right? Take a lesson from this guy I used to know. Slow down, think carefully, and you're going to get better. Another benefit of slow learning is error prevention. So if you work slowly through mathematics problems, you're less likely to make mistakes. And as a person who's very fast at mathematics, I've always just rushed through things, made my mistakes, gone back and been like, oh no, <laughs> what did I do? You know, and then, and then I try to fix my mistake. But if I had gone a little bit slower in the beginning, then you know, things would be okay. You can talk forever about the benefits of, you know, taking your time and just working a little bit more slowly and thinking more carefully. But as the story I gave at the beginning of this video highlights, if you're too slow, you are going to fail, literally. Like, right, he failed the first test. You know, you might fail your test. As a teacher, I saw it all the time in my students. I'd have students that were very, very good, but they worked very slowly and oftentimes they just didn't have enough time. And I could tell when it was one of these students because I would get their test and maybe the test was 20 questions 
and they'd have like 14 questions answered completely correct, but then six of them blank. And so I'd always remind my class, you know, just make sure, you know, you don't leave anything blank. Always write something down, even if it's garbage. It's okay. I'm used to reading bad mathematics. You know, as a teacher, um, you see a lot of bad mathematics and you see a lot of good mathematics, but you see, you see a lot of stuff, right? Because you're grading all of these tests from these people who are either very prepared, somewhat prepared, or just not prepared at all, right? Um, and it's fun to laugh about it when you're on the other side, but obviously it's not funny when you're a student, right? If you're a student and, and you're taking a test and you run out of time, that's not cool. So if you're a slow learner and you're, and you're trying to perform better, my advice is work on speed. One thing I used to do, and I'll use differential equations as an example for this, because I think this is the first time that I really was concerned about my grade. I, I wasn't doing bad, but I had this like crazy desire to be the best at the time. I wanted to be number one in that class, and I was. I, I think I scored a perfect score on, on every single test. It was ridiculous. And it's because not only did I work on you know understanding everything in the course, but I worked on speed. So one thing you can do is after you go over you know all of your notes and you know all of your homework problems and any type of re review that the teacher gives you, is to actually work on speed, right? Speed do problems. You can either just randomly pick them from your assignments or put them on note cards. I actually put them on on little flashcards, and I would put. A differential equation on each flashcard. I think I had like 50 flashcards and I would just shuffle them and give them to myself and then I would work out the problem as quickly as I could. So here's me again, right? Working on speed. This is before I knew about, you know, slow learning and careful thought, but it worked, right? I was able to get an A. And so I'd work out the problems super, super quick on a piece of paper. And then my solutions were so messy because I was writing so fast that I didn't really care. So I would just take the paper and crumble it up and just like throw it in the corner. I know it sounds ridiculous, but by the end of like a two or three hour study session, I had like a pile of trash all over the floor. And like, I, I mean, it really worked. It really worked. So working on speed is something that you should do if, if you're a slow learner. At the same time, if you're a slow learner, you shouldn't feel bad. You shouldn't feel dumb. I think that people who take more time to do problems, people who are a little bit more slowly, again, there's just a lot of benefits. They get a deeper understanding um, they learn patience and perseverance, right? You have to be patient to be a slow learner, right? You have to sit down and say, hey, I've got all the time in the world. And maybe you don't, but you have to tell yourself that. I have all the time in the world to sit here with this math book and this piece of paper and this pencil. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to learn this mathematics because I think it's interesting and I want to learn. It's not just about the test. It's about learning. And I think that's something that a lot of people who are too slow to learn might have. They might have this just like this innate ability to learn. They just want to learn for the sake of learning, which is good, right? I mean, that's what that's what learning should be about. But unfortunately, society is not that way, right? We have tests because you have to be evaluated in college, right? How else do you evaluate people, right? There's all kinds of philosophies and theories and stuff, but the simplest way is to give people a test. But that creates problems, right? There's no perfect way. Anxiety is a big one to people who are under pressure and have to perform quickly, oftentimes they become anxious. And so I think that a lot of times people who are a little bit slower, they're trying to fight that anxiety by saying, hey, I'm going to work slower. I'm going to slow down so I don't have to feel anxious. I'm just going to try to relax and take this test, which in theory, I mean, that's what you should do. But when you're in a testing situation, it's hard to relax. So I think the best way to prepare for that is, again, to just practice speed, work on speed. I'll tell you one more story, just one more, I promise. Um, I was taking a class once, uh, and I, I won't mention the class. I won't mention the teacher. Uh, it was in graduate school. And I remember on my first test, I, just, I did so bad. I, I don't remember what I got. It was in the 50s, though. It was like a 56. And you know, the teacher gave us the test back, and the test was like three questions. I think we had four, and we got to, we got to pick three. Like He gave us four or five questions, and we had to solve three. He gave us a test back and he says, all of the questions on the test had simple solutions. So hopefully you all did really well. And I was looking at my solutions and I thought none of them were simple and none of them were really fully correct. I mean, I just did so bad. 
And I felt that I didn't have enough time. Even being a person who's very fast, I felt like I needed more time because the problems were just so hard. It was just such a hard class. And a lot of people had run out of time on the test. And so he looked at the class and he had this really thick, harsh accent. And he said, speed is important. And I remember those words because I thought I was fast, but I wasn't fast enough apparently for his class. Fast forward to the end of the class, I ended up I think with an A minus uh, simply because on the final exam, there was one question that I answered that nobody else answered. And everyone's like, oh, wow, I can't believe you figured that out. Well, I won't take credit for it because I actually did that problem the night before in another book. It's one of the reasons I have so many books, right? Anyways, I'm derailing. Speed is important. It really does matter. So if you're a slow learner, make sure to also focus on speed. And if you're a fast learner, make sure to take a step back, right? and slow down. I think the best way is to have both, right? That's the best way. You have the ability to work slowly when you need to, and you have the ability to work fast when you need to. And eventually, you get to the place where you work at a good pace, where you can like finish your exams, and you can work effectively. And that's where you want to be. And how do you get there? Well, I think it's a combination, right? I think you have to practice slowing down when you're studying at home. You know, practice thinking about your solutions carefully. Take your time initially when you're learning those concepts, right? Go through everything really, really slowly. Understand everything. Write down all the definitions. Write down all those theorems, you know? And then when you are preparing for the test, then you work on speed. You say, okay, I've already mastered all of this material. I already know all of the theorems. I already know all the key theorems in these three chapters. You know, I know all of this. Let's just use linear algebra. You know, I know all of these key theorems in linear algebra. Um, I know all the dimension theorems, all the stuff related to span and independence and subspaces. But now I need to focus on, you know, producing proofs to these exercises in this book as quickly as possible. And that's how you become ready for tests. The, the bad part about all of this is that it's hard, right? It's really hard. It's not easy. That's what makes it, that's, that's, what's, that's what's tough. That's what sucks, right? Is that it's hard. Uh, it'd be really great if they can just like put stuff in our brains and implant everything in there. But then at the same time, I kind of think that that kind of kills it, right? I mean, learning... It's not just about the end goal. It's about the journey. It's about the grind. It's about struggling through it and, and accomplishing something. To me, that's why mathematics was always great. You know, I would sit down and I would figure out a problem on my own and I would feel good because I did it. It gave me like this, this sense of satisfaction. Uh, it just, just made me feel good, right? And I think for a lot of people, that's why, that's why they like math. Anyways, if you're a slow learner, don't feel bad. You have some gifts. You have an ability that a lot of people don't have, right? It's something that I still work on all the time. I have to slow down. I have to think slowly because naturally I'm very, very fast, right? And if you're a fast person, hopefully you can learn something from this video too. If you're not a subscriber to this channel, consider hitting that subscribe button, liking. I also have an Instagram. It's really fun. I just post a bunch of random stuff. It's the real math sourcer. Until next time, good luck. Take care and keep doing math.